Stay cool. Hit the button, baby. This is a Thor News presentation. Why are there no close-ups of Sarah's yet? Why ask why? Man, it is NASA. NASA, the king and queen of smoke and mirrors. Never a straight answer, only confusing explanations. But their explanation is, hey, blame it on the dark side. So sure, fine, dark side. Blame it on NASA's dark side. Well-informed popular science readers know that Ceres is probably a planet-destroying Death Star. We'd hope to get a closer look at the dwarf planet's possible super laser after NASA's dawn mission arrived in orbit on March 6th. See, even popular science considers Ceres a joke. After I covered it for the last two years, got excited, then I was just like, whatever, man, I'm just so done with this song and dance. It's true, man. But so far, we haven't seen any close-ups of Ceres. And there's a good reason why. The Dawn spacecraft has joined the dark side. No, not the Nazi Church of Satan, Darth Vader dark side. Not the dark side, just the Disney dark side of this little dwarf planet. If you'll notice, since the death of JFK, NASA's number one thing is making things kind of boring. Or extremely boring. Or super boring. Right? Right. So Star Wars jokes aside, NASA's pretty much the Jar Jar Binks of America. Oh yeah, Jar Jar Binks. Oh, Mars is boring. We can't do human space exploration. It's too expensive. Star Wars jokes aside, let's get to the jokes NASA passes off as... Come on, man. Rumors circulating in the underbelly of the internet are saying we haven't seen any new pictures of Ceres because NASA is trying to hide evidence of alien life. Well, I would say more accurate rumors are that the photos themselves are total bullshit and that they spend billions of dollars on these programs and give us these really boring, crappy, photoshopped photographs. No, no, no. And that the public who's become so bored with photographs of Mars, photographs of Comet Filet, pretty much anything and everything NASA's done in the last 40 years doesn't really care either way. They've literally bored you. They've literally bored the American public into even asking why we haven't come back to the moon in forever. And you know, I kind of got a feeling that Ceres was going to be a total bust when the majority of the Dawn spacecraft team pre-blocked me. You know, they just kind of knew, hey, Thor News is going to know. Thor is going to know that this is a joke and he is going to ravage us. You know what? I haven't ravaged them because I'm just tired of it, man. It's like getting in a boxing match with somebody in a straitjacket. And so where they're happy to talk about how great they are, do their cheerling pom-poms, cash their checks, and go home. I've just gotten bored with the excuses, the bad photographs, the strangeness. Star Wars jokes aside, rumors circulating in the underbelly of the internet are saying that we haven't seen any new pics of series because NASA is trying to hide evidence of alien life. That's ridiculous for a lot of reasons. Not the least of which is that NASA scientists planned this temporary blackout period years ago. Much like they planned the Shirtgate episode years ago. So we talked to Dawn mission scientist Mark Raymond about the radio silence and he explained it all has to do with the spacecraft's crazy path to the asteroid belt. You see, this was the quickest route from where we are. This was the quickest route from where we were, which was orbiting around the sun to where we wanted to be, which is orbiting Ceres. It's simply part of Dawn's amazingly acrobatic entry into orbit. To help explain, I made this handy, simplified drawing. See, that explains it. NASA doesn't give answers. They just give explanations. The drawing is not to scale, not even close. And like they didn't put an infrared camera on it. They just put a black and white camera on it, I guess. Maybe one day, NASA will have the technology to take color photographs. 
Today is not that day. Ordinarily, it wouldn't take quite so long for Dawn to travel from Sarah's dark side to its bright side. However, Dawn was in a rush to get to Sarah's and it was traveling very quickly. Though gravity and engine braking slowed down the spacecraft, Dawn kept traveling its original direction for a little while after Ceres captured the probe in its gravitational embrace from 38,000 miles out. See, wait a second. Remember when the Dawn thing got delayed for a month? So that should have screwed up their planning of a blackout. But whatever. But as Dawn moves closer in over the next few months, it will travel around the planetoid faster, and the periods it spends in the dark zone will be shorter but more frequent. Dawn will send back its next snapshots in early April. It will still be on the dark side then, but it will be fast approaching the bright side. So we'll be able to see a thin illuminated crescent, similar to the photo above, which Dawn snapped before entering Ceres' orbit. Better pictures will come out at the end of April when Dawn moves into the 8,400 mile orbit where it will begin mapping the planet Tolling's surface. Ceres will look about the size of a soccer ball viewed from the 10 feet away, but the photos will be three times better than Ceres' Death Star GIF above. Yet, expect the pictures to just get clearer and clearer. Alright, ever got that? And remember those ice volcanoes or whatever the white dots are? Man, that's just a red herring. So NASA can be like, oh wow, what is that? Oh, I bet it's ice volcanoes. Oh yeah, we were right. It was ice volcanoes. Man, you know, it's like, whatever. Yay, so let's take a look at the three of the NASA scientists who probably have me blocked. And that's great. Ladies, there's nothing that says strong scientist woman more than blocking people who ask real questions. I mean, think, who, like pretty much nothing but women, involved with NASA to have me blocked. These three ladies, Amy Mainzer, Phil Plate. Oh. Go ahead and down thumbs this video for that joke. I know, I know it bothers you. And you know what, at this point, I'm so tired, so tired of you selling my fellow Americans bullshit. That I don't care, I really don't. You know, you're supposed to be the inspiration to our entire country, man, women, and children. And instead, you have people so bored, so confused, and so bored. But hey, you guys get to go to South by Southwest, you get to go to comic book conventions, you get on TV. It's like you're famous, even though human space exploration is as dead as John F. Kennedy. So NASA, Planetary Division, Inner Solar System, Outer Solar System. Go ahead and take a bow for all your magic. And this video is probably not that funny because, you know, the whole situation ain't funny. It's just sad. It's so sad. It's like the equivalent of BP oil saying, hey, the deep horizon spill didn't really screw shit up. Or the well is fixed. Man, so lame. Here you go, Carrie Bean says, I'm not sure if I love robots because I work at JPL or if I work at JPL because I love robots. And you know what? NASA loves robots. Robot space exploration is totally thriving and human space exploration is totally dead. So, I'm not surprised that the chicks of Jack Parsons lab love robots and are more than happy and satisfied that human space exploration is no closer to taking another giant step forward for mankind than they were in 1972. So you know what? I may not make the hundred thousand plus dollars that NASA JPL scientists do, but I get to keep my integrity I get to be honest with people. And you know what? I get to be cool. I'm okay with that. So this ends. What is the coolest part of your job? She says, I can't praise Jack Parsons Lab enough. And if you didn't catch my episode where I explained 
Jack Parsons, who founded the Jet Propulsion Lab, was Aleister Crowley's right-hand man, wrote the Book of the Antichrist. You know, it just fits right in. She says, it's really great getting to come to work with some of the most brilliant, dedicated people on the planet. Spare me! Spare me! Spare me, man. Sounds like Voldemort and the Death Eaters. They're like, I'm so happy to be working with the Death Eaters. Voldemort is the most talented, brilliant, honest, kind, caring antichrist on the planet. It's just super fun getting to work at Jack Parsons' lab every day. Uninspiring America. Congrats. See everybody, Dwarf Planet series it's just a big stupid rock. There's nothing to get excited about. There's nothing to see here. I mean, yeah, I got excited about it, but I'm a dumbass. Stay cool. Hit the button, baby. This is a Thor News presentation.